Let's talk about graphing relationships. This is going to be an introduction to functions and relations. And the first thing I want to go over is the coordinate plane. So the coordinate plane, you also might hear it referred to as Cartesian plane. The coordinate plane is a two-dimensional plane formed by the intersection of two perpendicular lines. That means they intersect to form right angles. The vertical line is known as the y-axis. I'm not really sure what that was, but it should look like this. The y-axis, that's this vertical axis right here. And the horizontal line is known as the x-axis. Horizontal, that's this one right here. These lines intersect at the origin. And that origin is right there. It's at 0, 0. So let's go over what you probably already know about the coordinate plane. First, there are four quadrants in the coordinate plane. So where these two axes intersect, they form four quadrants. This is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. So you wanna make sure that when you're labeling quadrants, quadrant one starts in this upper right corner. And it kind of goes around like that, kind of like a C. So every ordered pair, which that brings me to the next thing I want to talk about, what are ordered pairs? Ordered pairs are used to give the location of a point on the coordinate plane. So an ordered pair is written X comma Y and points are named by capital letters. So X comma Y, this is your ordered pair. The first number tells you to go left or right. If it's positive, you go left. If it's negative, you go right. The second number tells you to go up or down. If the number's positive, you'll go up. If it's negative, you, you'll go down. So if you look at quadrant one, if your ordered pair, your ordered pair is gonna be in quadrant one, it's gonna be positive, positive. So this is just an example. Positive three, positive four. I'm gonna go over to the right three and up four. Okay, there's where the point three, four would be. In quadrant two, your x value is going to be negative because you're going to go left, for example, three, then up four. In quadrant three, both numbers are negative because in order to get in quadrant three, you need, you need to go left and then down. So negative three will take you left three, and negative four will take you down four. And in quadrant four, your ordered pair is going to be positive and then negative because you'll be going right and then down. So right three will be positive three, down four will be negative four. So let's talk about ordered pairs. So when given this coordinate plane right here, we're going to determine which point is located at or given these ordered pairs. Okay, and so we can name points with capital letters. So which point is located at negative five two? Well, I'm going to go left five and up two. Right there is the location. That point is point D. What about one seven? Well, one means I'm gonna go from my origin. My origin is my starting point at zero, zero. I'm gonna go right one. That second number tells me to go up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the point located at one seven is point E. What about the point located at negative three and a half, negative two and a half? Well, I'm gonna go right one, I'm sorry, left, because negative, right? Negative one, negative two, negative three, and then a little half more, right, in between three and four, and then I'm gonna go down at two and a half. So there's negative one, there's negative two, there is an extra half. So this point right here, point C, is located at negative 3.5, negative 2.5. So now let's talk about the quadrant where each of these points lies. Okay, so which quadrant does point B lie in? That's this one right here. That would be quadrant four. Okay, and we write them in Roman numerals. What about quadrant A? I'm sorry, point A. Quadrant one. What about point D? What quadrant is point D in? Quadrant two, right? Because remember, it goes like this, quadrant one, two, three, and then four. So let's move on. 
when we talk about generating and graphing ordered pairs. So I've got some stuff that I want to introduce to you and you may have you may already know what I'm talking about, but let's go through it. So ordered pairs can be generated when an equation contains two variables. So up to this point, you've probably looked at equations that contain only one variable. Well, now we're going to be looking at equations that contain two variables. Hence why when we graph them, we need more than just one line. Since we have two variables, we need a number line that represents our x variable and another line that represents our y variable, which is why we graph them on a coordinate plane. So we'll call this function the rule. X values represent the input, which generate Y values that represent the output. So when we talk about X and Y values, X values are your input, Y values are your output. So in a function, the output, which is the value of y, is determined by the input, the value of x. For any input, there is exactly one output, and this is for a function. Here is an example of a function rule used to generate ordered pairs. When the points are graphed, we can connect them to make a straight line. So in this example right here, here's a table of values. Here's your function rule, y equals 2x plus 1. What you're going to do when filling this table is, I've just given three numbers here, negative 1, 0, and 1. What you're going to do is, you're going to find when x is negative 1, what is y? Well, what I'm going to do is go through and I replace x with parentheses, and in par those parentheses, I put what x equals. In this case, x is negative 1. And then I solve it. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So when I plug in negative 1 for x, I get negative 1 for y. And I can write it as an ordered pair. This is what I input for x. This is what I got as an output. And you can do the same for any value of x. In this case, this is just a table that shows the x values of negative 1, 0, and 1. And I could, if I wanted to, make this table bigger and put a two there and a three there, but I didn't. I just stopped to show you this example. And then what you can do is take these points in this table right here on this side and you could graph them. Here's negative one, one, here's zero, one, here's one, three, and then I can connect them and they make a straight line. So what we're gonna do today is generate ordered pairs for each function using the given values for x. Graph the ordered pairs and connect them to form a pattern. So what I'm going to do is just input these values for x and see what I get as an output, and I'm going to write them as an ordered pair. So what I'm going to do first, this is my function rule. That's the rule. I'm going to replace x with parentheses. And in those parentheses, I'm going to put what x equals. In this case, x is negative 2. Then I'm just going to solve it. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. When I plug in negative 2 for x, I get negative 8 for y. So I can write it as an ordered pair. Let's go to the next one. y equals 3 parentheses minus 2. What am I going to put in those parentheses? Negative 1. And then I just uh, simplify the expression. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. When I plug in negative 1 for x, I get negative 5 for y. Doing the next one, y equals 3 times 0 minus 2. What is that going to be? When I plug in 0 for x, what do I get for y? Negative 2. What about 1? When I plug in 1 for x, 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2 is 1. When I plug in 1 for x, I get 1 for y. What about 2? 3 times 2 minus 2. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 is 4. When I plug in 2 for x, I get 4 for y. So next what we're going to do is take these points 
and graph them on this coordinate plane and see what type of pattern we get. Okay, so you might get lines, curves, U shapes, V shapes, weird shapes, but let's see what we get here. Let's graph the point negative two, negative eight. I'm gonna go, now these are 10, 10 out in each direction. So I'm gonna go left two and down to eight, negative eight, sorry. Then negative one, negative five. Negative one, negative one, two, three, four. There's negative five. Zero, negative two. Right there, it's on my y axis. One, one is right there. And two, four. And what looky there, I can connect these points and they form a straight line, just like that. All right, let's move on to the next one. Number two. Uh-oh, I've got a, an exponent in this one. So let's be careful with that. So the rule is y equals x squared minus two. So what I'm gonna do is first, replace my variable with parentheses, everything else stays there. And then in those parentheses, I'm gonna put the value of x, which is negative two. Negative two squared is four, four minus two is two. When I plug in negative two for x, I get two for y. Let's do the next one. I'm gonna plug in negative one for x and then subtract two. So it's important whenever you're replacing a variable with a value, first replace it with parentheses. Because remember, negative two is different than negative two. If I write it like I did up here, which is the way it should be, it's positive four. If I write it like this, or even plug it into my calculator like that, it'll give you this as your answer. And that's not correct. So you wanna make sure that you write it correctly. So moving on, negative one squared is one, one minus two is negative one. So when I plug in negative one for x, I get negative one for y. Let's move on. When I plug in zero, what do I get for y when I plug in zero for x? Negative two. What about when I plug in one? One squared is one, minus two is negative one. What about two? When I plug in two, what do I get? When I plug in two, I get two. And do you notice anything about this? When I plug in negative one for x, I get negative one. Well, when I plug in one for x, I also get negative one. Hmm, maybe because when I square a number, no matter if that number is positive or negative, I'll always get a positive. So now let's graph these points and see um, what we're looking at here. So negative two, two is right there. Negative one, one, oh, I'm sorry, that's not, doesn't go there. Negative one, negative one, zero, negative two, one, negative one, and two, two. And if you wanna pause the video and you know graph your ordered pairs, maybe it takes you a little bit longer to graph, I would suggest getting really, really good at that because you need to be good at graphing ordered pairs for the rest of the year in Algebra 1. In this particular graph, I know you'll kind of want to draw a V, but it actually curves like this, okay? And the reason I draw those arrows on the end, which it should go through that point, the reason I draw those arrows on the end is because if I wanted to, I could figure out what the value of Y would be if I plugged in a negative 3, okay? It would be up here somewhere. And if I wanted to plug in positive three for X, I could figure out what the value of Y would be. And if the trend continues, it'll go up just like that. So that's why I'll put arrows on the end. Let's move on to number three. Do you remember what those little lines outside of this expression are? Those are absolute value bars and absolute value is always positive. So here's your rule. What I'm gonna do is take the absolute value of, and I'm not gonna put in parentheses here just because I think it might be confusing for you, but negative two plus one. I'm gonna take the absolute value of that. When I plug in negative two for the value of x, what do I get for y? Negative two plus one is negative one. What's the absolute value of negative one? It's positive one because it's always positive. 
It's not always opposite, which a lot of students tell me. It's always positive. So let's do the next one. Absolute value of negative 1 plus 1. What's the absolute value of 0? It's just 0. So when I plug in negative 1 for x, I get 0 for y. Now let's plug in 0 for x. When I plug in 0 for x, what do I get for y? I get 1. What about when I plug in 1 for x? Looks like a lot of just vertical lines right there, but that's the absolute value of 1 plus 1, which is 2. What about the absolute value of 2 plus 1? When I plug in 2 for x, what do I get for y? I get 3. So now let's graph these ordered pairs. Negative 2, 1, and I suggest pausing this video and graphing your ordered pairs and determining, um, connect your points and see what you get. So negative 2, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 3. Now this actually looks like a V, and if you're unsure of what this will look like, could you plug in a negative 3 in for x? Absolute value of negative 3 plus 1. Well, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So when I plug in negative 3 for x, I would get positive 2 for y. I could keep going here. Okay, it's going to be the same exact thing over there. So that's what that looks like for this rule right here. y equals the absolute value of x plus 1. And that concludes your notes over graphing relationships, which is an introduction to relations and functions by generating and graphing ordered pairs. I hope it was helpful.